Let me begin this video by asking you a very straightforward and simple question. If you're an Elementor user, how intrusive do you find the advertising and the pushing and the promotion of their paid services like the image optimization, AI, and so on? I know for me, this is something that was highlighted very recently on the WP Minute with Matt Medeiros and Ryan Logan alongside Miriam Schwab from Elementor itself about how you can't disable the AI functionality inside Elementor Pro and free. And for an agency, that can be a bit of an issue. So today I want to take a look at how intrusive this all is, all the different things that are kind of going on for the advertising, the pushing and the promotion. I'll give an idea of what to expect. But like I say, I want your feedback on this. Let me have your feedback in the comment section down below. Okay, I will link to the video, the live stream that Matt did on the WP Minute with Ryan and Miriam. That'll be linked in the description down below. I would recommend you take a look at it because it's quite interesting in how it's being approached. So let me set the ground rules. I've installed Elemental and Elemental Pro on a completely clean website. I also have a switcher to allow me to switch user roles between sort of admins and editors and so on, so I can see what the experience is like from different use cases inside the dashboard. So the first thing you're going to see once you've installed it is you get the Elemental Overview panel inside the dashboard itself. Now, I've disabled everything else just to sort of highlight this. And this is something that we're kind of used to. It is kind of frustrating and annoying, but it is something that's there. And we can disable it to a certain extent. And there are plugins that allow you to disable these features. So that is quite cool. But let's go and take a look now if we just jump into creating a page, adding some content and what we experience. So we'll come over to the Pages section, go into Add a New Page, We'll call it Elemental Pro, and we'll just publish this. Doesn't really matter. So let's edit this with Elementor. So this is our first experience of loading into Elemental, Elemental Pro once you've activated it. And we're already being asked to uncover AI superpowers. Now, we can skip this, or we can say, let's do it. So let's say, let's do it. Let's just say we're logging in for the first time. Let's do it. And the first thing we've got is to step into the future with Elemental AI. So I have to approve this to get started. Now, I'm not going to do that because this is a paid service. Let's say I don't want that. Get rid of it. Okay, so this is the editor, the first time we're logging into the editor. Down the left-hand side, we've got all our widgets. Let's scroll on down. Pretty cool. Oh, hang on. Explore add-ons. Okay, what's this? Let's open this up. So now taken over into the popular add-ons. So we can see some things to do with Elemental themselves, like the image optimizer. We'll come back to that in a moment. And Elemental AI, which again, we've already seen that that information is there. And various other plugins and services and things related to building websites. Now, one thing I do want to say on here is popular add-ons with new possibilities. So you can boost your website creation, blah, 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 blah. And there's a little, little asterisk at the end. So what does that relate to? Let's scroll down the page and see if we can find out. Please note that certain tools and services on this page are developed by third-party companies and not part of Elemental's suite of products or support. Before using them, we recommend independently evaluating them. Additionally, when clicking on their action buttons, you may be redirected to an external website. Okay, fair enough. Let's go and click on one of those. Let's say we're interested in, I don't know, doesn't really matter too much. Let's say essential add-ons. I'm not picking on any particular one. Let's say, let's go. Okay, so we now have essential add-ons. Let's take a quick look at the URL. Now, if we take a look at this information, you can see this is the campaign partner. Now, I'm wondering, is this this VIA and this 3908, is that a partner ID? As in, is this an affiliate sale? Let's jump back out of this and try a different one. Let's try something like... Ultimate add-ons. Again, I'm not picking on any... Actually, let's go for gravity forms. I'm not picking on any particular one. I'm just randomly picking them in general. Again, let's take a quick look. Medium affiliate. Partner ID 4419716. So these, to me, look like affiliate links. I could be wrong, but they do look like affiliate links. And by that, I'm saying that if you click on them and you purchase it, that Elemental will get a percentage of that sale. Absolutely nothing wrong with that, as long as it's clearly identified. Now, for me, let's go take a look at learn more about this page. So let's see if there's some information here about this affiliate side of things. So I've read through all this. It doesn't really say much other than partners and so on. Let's scroll down to the FAQs. I would say, why do I see affiliation links if I already paid for the pro hosting? Let's open this up. Now, I would recommend you read through this because up until this point, all this does not mention anything to do with affiliates. 
The only way to make sure these companies fulfill their obligations is by going into business with them. Now, I'm not too sure what they mean by that, but that still doesn't technically say anything to do with affiliate links. So I'll let you read into that what you want to. But for me, I would rather see clearly identify that if you click on these links, there may be affiliate links and we may get a percentage of the sale. That to me is something you should be clear. Obviously, the laws of the world may be different. Just something I would like to see just for clarity, just to avoid any confusion. Anyway, back to what we were doing originally. So we have this add-on section, this extend with Elementor add-on slapped at the bottom. Now bear in mind, I'm using the pro version of Elementor here, not the free version. So I would like to be able to remove all of this. And we'll take a look if we have any options for that in a moment. Okay, so let's take a look. What else do we have? Let's close down our structure panel. Oh, what's this little birthday box? What's new? Oh, look, I can start a free trial of AI. And lots and lots of information inside there. But the first thing on there is to start a free trial. So at least it actually says start a free trial, not what you see when you click. Let's click on that. And we can get Elemental AI. Okay, so another way of getting Elemental AI shoehorned into the editor. But again, I would like to see that be able to be removed. Okay, let's go and do something like, let's add an image in. Is it, you know, pretty common practice. Let's choose how we want this to be structured. Let's go and choose an image. Let's edit an image. Oh, hang on before we do. What's these little three little sparkles? Oh, create with AI, which I don't have enabled. I haven't paid for it, but it's in my editor. Again, we'll come back to that in a moment. Choose an image. Let's go and upload some files. I've already downloaded a couple from Pexels. Let's upload those. Okay, the experience is quite simple and straightforward. Cool. Let's choose this image and select that. Oh, hang on. Uh, Optimize your image to enhance site performance by using Image Optimizer. So I've got to install another plugin, which, okay, you do get 150 free credits, but that's spread across all your sites, I believe. Either way, it's still asking you to install another plugin. Now, if you're used to this, you could just close it down, get rid of it, job done, it's gone. But it's still advertising inside this paid platform. And using the argument of we're just trying to make kind of the developers, the designers' lives a little bit easier by offering these solutions, I don't want these solutions to be inside the editor itself. So let's publish this page. And let's just go out of here, exit to WordPress, and let's go into the media section. So let's go into our library. Oh, look, I've got speed up your website with image optimizer by Elementor. So I've got another nag screen asking me to install a plugin. Oh, and I've got generate with Elementor AI, which I don't pay for. So these things are not only inside the editor itself, they're also dotted around various different parts of the WordPress interface, being, in my opinion, a little bit obtrusive. So let's go and disable them. Let's go into Elementor. Let's come into the settings section. Let's go into features. Chances are they're going to be inside there, surely. We can come in. What have we got? Hmm. Floating buttons, display conditions, taxonomy, search, ah, stable features. Let's have a little look. Anything inside there? Uh... Build with AI. Okay, let's get rid of that. Let's say inactive. We don't want that to be included. Nothing else inside you though. So let's save changes. Cool. Now let's go back into, for example, our media library. Still got, wait, hang on a minute. Surely I just disabled the AI feature. So it's still there and the installer plugin is still there. Let's go into the Elementor editor. Chances are it's gone from there, surely. This time, let's go and add a heading in. Let's say we want to add a heading here. We'll drag that into our design. Oh, right with AI. But I just disabled the AI. This is kind of what I'm getting at, is that we need to have controls inside a tool like this to be able to disable these features. There's nothing wrong with presenting them and offering people the ability to be able to enable these features. But when they don't choose to actually have them, remove all instances of that. Let them go in to the add-ons, for example, or go somewhere else in the settings to enable these features, or at least disable them. If you're an agency, you want all these things removed. Now, speaking of being an agency, what's the experience from the other side? Let's say you set things up for an editor and you want them to have access to be able to add content to your site and use some basic elemental functionality. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch over to Dana91, who, as you can see, is an editor. So let's switch to that user role. 
as you can see now, we've got less functions inside here. However, let's go into one of the pages. Let's edit this Elemental Pro one. We'll edit it with Elemental. And the first thing that my editor sees is this upsell to get AI. Now, if you've got the uninitiated, a little bit new to maybe working with a tool like this, they may go, oh, cool, that sounds interesting. Let's go and let's do it. And then they've got to go and add this in. So step into Elemental. Okay, well, oh, hang on. And we've got this What's New rubbish inside here as well, which starts a free trial. Or we've got the other features inside here. Or let's come out of this completely. And they want to go and add in some images. And oh, look, we've got Generate with Elementor AI. Let's go and take a look. Oh, we've got another upsell or connect this to the account. And, and what the hell is going on here? You can see what I'm talking about. These are intrusive ways of not only having this as part of the editor experience if you are an administrator, but if you give editor access, you'll see that there are also various different parts of the interface where these features are dotted around. Again, let's go back out of this, go back into one of our pages. Again, scroll to the bottom on the left-hand side. So you can see there's the Explore Add-ons feature again. Now let's click on Explore Add-ons. Let's just say I'm the editor. I think, oh, this looks interesting. What can I add into Elementor? Click on it. Oh, uh, now I've got an error page. I'm not allowed to access this page. That's kind of confusing. Uh, what do I do now? You kind of get the idea here where I'm coming from with this. This is not a particularly great experience for either the administrator creating the site or editors and so on afterwards using the site. There are various different things dotted around you that should be disableable, if that's even a word. Now, I may have done this in a bit of a lighthearted way, but it does underline the whole problem that we have with something like Elemental and these features being dotted around the editor, the interface of WordPress and so on, and no easy, clear way of being able to disable those. Now, it's, it's annoying enough when you're an agency owner and you're building the website to have these things all over the place with no way of turning them off. But when you hand this off to a client, whatever user role you give them, the last thing you want is to give them access to adding add-ons in there, to enabling AI and access in those kinds of things, or image compression tools and things, things that are completely out of your control. So what I would love to see is Elemental address this. Now, I know in that live stream that they listened, but... Listening is one thing, actioning it is another. Now, the question we have to ask ourselves is, is it a case that there's a very small minority of agency owners and developers and things like that that work with clients that are making a bit of a fuss and getting frustrated, whereas the majority of users out there are quite happy to have all these facilities included in Elemental, making their lives easier by giving them the ability to create more unique websites using AI and all those kinds of things. If that is the case, well, I can totally understand why Elementor are taking this approach. However, I can't see it would be that difficult to simply have a switch enabled inside the settings that allows you to at least hide those buttons and icons to technically remove AI and image optimization, the little add-on sort of links and things in the actual elements bar on the left-hand side. So, it gives everybody the happy medium. Surely that wouldn't be very difficult, even if it's just being hidden by CSS to hide those icons. Give the agency owners and those people that don't want their clients to see these things that simple ability. Then when they create their blueprint site, all those things can be set up enabled, and they only have to do it one time. Then they can just offload that and start building the website. Anyway, that's just my opinion and my way that I think there should be having a workaround to it. What are your thoughts? Let me have those in the comment section down below. As always, my name is Paul C. This is WP Tatson. Until next time, take care.